is Emily Yu, and I'm with Anderson Tax LLP. Today, I would like to discuss renunciation of U.S. citizenship. Renunciation of U.S. citizenship is a personal and important decision because it has both U.S. immigration and U.S. tax implications. I want to emphasize on the U.S. tax implications, but I do want to mention that for U.S. immigration purposes, once a person renounces U.S. citizenship, you will lose the ability to hold a U.S. passport and the right to enter the U.S. For that reason, a person should know U.S. citizenship until this person is a citizen of a different country. Because renouncing U.S. citizenship without being a citizen of another country will render the person stateless. Renouncing U.S. citizenship may help reduce future filing obligations in the U.S. However, it may also result in adverse U.S. taxation. Why you renounce U.S. citizenship? There are many different reasons, but for clients that I work with, it's mostly to minimize complexity. They live and work in the U in the Canada. They pay Canadian tax and file Canadian returns each year. But as uh, the result of their U.S. citizenship, they also are required to file in the U.S. as well and incur compliance costs associated with uh, such filing. Foreign tax credit for Canadian tax paid is usually very effective at reducing or completely eliminating U.S. tax. However, there are certain U.S. taxes that cannot be reduced or eliminated by foreign tax credit. This includes tax on net investment income, and tax on what is called a guilty. This stands for Global Intangible Low Tax Income. In addition to U.S. income tax liabilities, U.S. also requires a, a host of um, information disclosures. Typically, a Canadian needs to uh, report bank accounts in Canada or anywhere else outside the U.S., Canadian mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, as well as the interest in Canadian corporations, trust, and partnerships. Many of these information disclosure forms are subject to late filing penalties. By renouncing U.S. citizenship, the person can avoid future funding obligations in the U.S., including these information disclosure requirements. How do you renounce U.S. citizenship? It's actually a formal process, and it requires a meeting with a U.S. consulate. Uh, the first step is to request such a meeting because sometimes it takes two to four months to secure appointment and requires an in-person meeting with a consulate office and it needs to be done from outside the U.S. There's a consulate fee of about $2,400 and this is U.S. dollars that's payable. In a lot of countries, you may not even have to wait to make an appointment. So if you're from Canada, but want to renounce by a certain date, considering going to a different country, Mexico, Iceland, or different country, that you can renounce much faster. Covered expatriates are subject to U.S. exit tax. What is a covered expatriate? Covered expatriate is a former U.S. citizen who meets one or more of the three conditions. One of the conditions is that this person's average net U.S. tax in the last five years is more than $168,000, again, U.S. dollars. And if this person files jointly in the U.S., is the joint tax liability that needs to be considered. Another condition is that the net worth of this person is more than $2 million at the time of renunciation. The final condition is that this person must be compliant with U.S. tax requirement in the last five years. Compliance in this case means filing U.S. tax returns as well as all required information disclosures. These conditions are actually yes-no questions and they are reported on expatriation statement. This statement is filed for the year of renunciation. There are some exceptions for due citizens and minors who renounce by the age of uh, 18 and a half. For due citizens who are born as both Canadian and U.S. citizens, they are not considered covered expatriate if they file five years of U.S. returns, are resident of Canada, and they have not been U.S. resident for more than 10 years in the last 15 tax years. U.S. citizens who are not covered expatriate can renounce their U.S. citizenship without being subject to U.S. exit tax. If somebody is subject to covered expatriate regime, 
they're subject to U.S. exit tax. And for U.S. exit tax, the person is deemed to have disposed of their worldwide asset the day before the renunciation. Any net gain is subject to U.S. tax at a maximum rate of 20%. Deemed losses reduce deemed gains. The net gain is reduced by about $700,000 U.S. exemption amount. For U.S. exit tax purposes, the person is also deemed to have received the full value of any deferred compensation, as well as certain tax deferred accounts. For Canadian residents, a deferred compensation is typically retirement arrangement. This includes pension plans with the employer or private pension plans, such as registered retirement savings plan or registered retirement income fund. Deferred compensation that's deemed to have received its tax in the U.S. as ordinary income at a maximum rate of 37%. If the person has an interest in U.S. non grantor trust or tax deferred accounts, special rules apply to interest in U.S. non grantor trust as well as certain tax deferred accounts. If a covered expatriate gives to a U.S. person, and this is U.S. citizen or U.S. resident, the recipient is subject to U.S. gift tax at the time of the receipt, and the rate is 40%. For example, if a parent who is a covered expatriate gives to a child who is in the U.S. a million dollars, the child is subject to $400,000 of gift tax at the time of the receipt. Few key things to remember is that renunciation is final, and the person should be a citizen of a different country before renouncing U.S. citizenship. And file last five years of U.S. tax returns and information disclosures, because without doing so, the person will automatically be a covered expatriate. Before renouncing U.S. citizenship, determine if the person will be subject to U.S. exit tax. Remember, if a person meets one or more of the conditions we discussed, there are ways to mitigate. For example, if the person has not filed five years of return, file them before renunciation. If a person's net worth currently exceeds $2 million US, the person can take actions to reduce the net worth before renunciation. Many Canadian residents have held US green cards in the past. That makes them lawful permanent residents of the US. This status does not end even if the green card expires or they simply lost the green card. Lawful permanent resident status only ends when a green card is formally abandoned or judicially rescinded. Formal abandonment means surrendering your US green card at a US port of entry or a US consulate. Lawful permanent resident of the US who have not formally abandoned the green card or had it judicially rescinded are subject to the same U.S. filing obligation as a U.S. citizen or U.S. resident, regardless where they live in the world or how long ago they moved away from the U.S. Even if you don't owe tax, you still have U.S. filing obligations. If you don't file the required disclosures, you're subject to penalties. These penalties can be substantial, especially the longer you wait. If you have held the U.S. green card for seven years or less, abandoning it is an easy process. You can surrender the card at a U.S. port of entry or U.S. consulate. However, if you have had the U.S. green card for more than seven years, you're considered long-term resident of the U.S. So you're subject to the same rules as a U.S. citizen renouncing U.S. citizenship. And you're subject to the U.S. covered expatriate regime and U.S. exit tax. <music>